race car spelled backwards is still race car. Welcome to the race car spelled backwards podcast. All right, let's get this well, show. It was started. almost a, it was almost a Porsche double penetration until number nine, and I can't pronounce his name, Geminet. Are you you actually have names of these guys? They had names. I didn't know any of their names. Jimmy Johnson. That was about it that I could pronounce. You know, not a lot of redneck Southerners. Oh, there were at that race. There were right there. I saw. Well, they might not have been driving, but they were at the track, dude. I I didn't see. <laughs> I you know us lowly peasants. We didn't we didn't really know a whole lot of the driver names. I mean, I was looking around to see if, you know, might have had to slap Bubba off of his sister, Cherie. Oh, yeah. The meth addicts we saw walking through the infield. I think they thought they were. That was my first impression of the 24 hours of Daytona was the two meth addicts walking through the infield. I think they were lost. I think they owned the hotel we tried to stay at. (laughs) yeah well the hotel was a piece of crap total piece of crap they might well they were definitely month-to-month residents or weekly residents the owners well that might have been the owners or it might have been those homeless people behind the back window smoking rock yeah or meth i think that homeless guy was definitely the owner so but I had a blast, man. I thought the race was cool. It was something completely different, something that I've never experienced before. You know, I I grew up watching and going to NASCAR races and dirt track racing. So 24-hour Le Mans sports car IMSA racing is something that I've never experienced. And after going, I would definitely like to go again under better weather conditions. Oh, I, I know I said that I would wait till I saw a seven-day forecast before I bought the tickets, but that is so rare that it's that cold. I think I'll just go ahead and get them. Yeah, I mean, the chances of it being that cold two years in a row are probably slim. I think we, sh- on average, I think they said it's usually in the 50s at night, and you know, mid-60s in the day. That's doable, but 29 degrees at night – walking around like a Stay puff Marshmallow. I mean, I couldn't even bend my leg. It wasn't bad till about, what, 2 o'clock in the morning? I don't know. It was pretty rough once the sun went down. But it was cool. I had a blast, man. Like I said, I would definitely do it again. But the one thing that stuck out to me was the skill set for the drivers out there on the track, you know, is – it's nothing like NASCAR. I think it's a completely different discipline you have to learn to be able to have the endurance to last that long in a car, making that many turns. I don't know that just any NASCAR driver could jump in a sports car, just like vice versa. I don't think any sports car driver could jump in a cup car and be successful. Don't you think that's why it's alluring for the – and did you like that word? Alluring, or is it alluring? Ah, fuck it. I got no idea. Don't you, th- <laughs> don't you think that's the cheese for the rats in NASCAR? Not that they're rats, but you know, that's the temptation. They're they're the best drivers in the freaking world. Well, that's what they say, I mean, at least. <laughs> I think. Well, got, I mean, look I, at I all the disciplines. You got NASCAR. You got F one. You got your full time IMSA guys. You got indie car drivers. And sports I mean, cars. Jordan Taylor. I, you know, he could probably do well in NASCAR at least at the road courses. Uh, Jordan Taylor would be. A, I would actually like to see Jordan Taylor in the TV booth for a Cup race with Clint Boyer. The oh, two those of them two together. guys. <laughs> that would be like putting two ferrets on acid in a one by one. But square cube. Right, so two, would, ha- two hamsters on a wheel, one running right and one running left. <laughs> and then have Dale Jr. there as another color commentator. He could just observe. We could watch his eyes get bigger and bigger and bigger. 
I like Tony Stewart in the booth. So. Tony Stewart is my was until he retired my favorite driver. But I liked there was a nice banter between Gordon and Clint, and maybe it'll get better because Tony Stewart just keeps getting better and better at anything he does. But well, I, I don't think know. Tony's doing. He's only doing four races, if I'm not mistaken. Do you think there might be an all Clint still looking at Tony as his boss? I doubt it. Not with you Clint. don't think so? Maybe somebody else, but I, I think Clint and Tony, there are a lot alike. And in, in the fact that they don't hold back what they say. I mean, neither, one that, worried, neither one of them are worried about hurting somebody's feelings. Do you think that when they hop in that rental car, their Ford Fusion, that Tony says, I'm driving? No doubt. Clint, Clint, get out. I'm driving. No and doubt. Clint, does Clint relent? Yes, oh, boss. Man. Yeah, Clint has to. Who's who's the better driver? Who has the better resume to be driving the Uber to and from the track? Clint or Tony? T Dog Stewart's got two championships. Can't can't argue with that. That's right. So Tony would make a better Uber driver than Clint Boyer. And in a fight, Tony's nuts, man. He's batshit crazy when he starts fisticuffs. I mean, he'll fuck yeah. you up. Yeah, well, we I saw would, Clint with Gordon. We saw Clint with Gordon. It was kind of what, a bitch slap session? It was more like a chase session. They chased each other, then they hugged, and then they slapped bottoms. And they might have rolled around on the ground for a second, but. We don't ever get good fights in NASCAR anyway. No, it's been a long time. But, you know, that's my criticism of NASCAR. They've cleansed it so much. The drivers are so fucking practiced. I mean, you know, hold on. Let me drink my sponsor's drink. And well, no one like says anything to them. Like, they allow them to turn their bodies sideways Get the label just right and suck that sucker down like they're slobbing on a six-inch dick. Well, that's because they're paid to broadcast their sponsorship all over the place. I think they get paid every time they drink a Coke on TV, right? Yeah, probably. There's the Coke, uh, what do they call them? The Young Hustlers? It used to be the Young Guns, but now they're all old studs. <laughs> I don't know if they're studs. I mean... Is Harvick still? I'm going to look it up. Is Harvick still a Coke young gun? No, he drives for a beer company, so he can't be a Coke guy anymore. And only people over 65 still drinks beer, so. (laughs) Well, you notice that the clash, during the clash this year, every driver almost seemed like they were scripted when they were asked about the clash. Every one of them said, this is a great event. This is a success. NASCAR did a great job. Almost like NASCAR got on to the drivers and told them they better say it was good. Now, I thought the Clash was a good race personally, but I enjoyed it. It wasn't what I want to see every weekend, but for a one-off event, I'm good with that every year. It was a lot more interesting than the Clash at Daytona has been for the last 10, 15 years. Yep, that gearbox, man. What's going on with that shit? You think we'll have a lot of cars torn up? I'm hoping that uh, they will. I'm sure every team has looked at that gearbox and gone over it over and over again. But that doesn't mean there won't. I mean, was Almirola even hit? I don't know. I don't what knocked them out? Well, you look at Tyler Reddick broke a transaxle. And Tyler Reddick probably had one of the fastest cars out there. So. I mean, they just sat there and watched, man.
Well, Clash that... need to be. I think they need a little bigger track. Like a well, at least fifty more laps. I think it. But then again, the Clash was not a race for your typical race fan. You know, we get the rest of the season typical race fan races, four or five hundred mile races. The Clash was a good introductory race for new fans, younger fans, to kind of get them interested into the series. And I'm okay with that. I, if we don't continue to grow NASCAR, it's going to go away. Do you really think it'll go away? Well, if all the fans get old and die, who's going to watch? What is the average age of a NASCAR fan? What's I would have to say thirties and thirty to fifty. You know that that's a I know that's a big gap, but heck it might even be late thirties to early fifties. Holy shit, I just Googled it. What'd it say? Fifty eight years old. Ooh, I was way off. That's older than Dave Moody. That is on statisticals. No, not statisticals. Statista. <laughs> Dot com. Stop talking Based about on, your, your statisticals on the show. I'm in my 50s. I can barely find them. Shit. This is not a podcast. I'm going to take Viagra just to shave them. I'm going to take Viagra just to shave them, dude. <laughs> it's going to be the name of the show next week. Viagra to shave them. Racing. <laughs> <laughs> so you, do you watch Here's Fox. I did not. You watched any of it? Um, no, I did watch the qualifying. Yeah, I did. Okay, I watched it this morning. I turned it on. Last she night. did. I watched it on morning. YouTube. Uh, I watched. I recorded it and watched it this morning, but I also got on last night to see if my prediction of Rick Hendrick putting a car on the pole was going to come true again, and of course, it did. Well, they are the best team in NASCAR. Well, they're there's think, no question. They got the best yeah, drivers. They've been on the pole a lot here recently. I think what was it, Alex Bowman was going for three in a row on the pole or something like that. So I think he they either said he tied a record for most front rows or broke the record. I and if we had any listeners they could correct us, but you know. Too bad we can't call Freddie Kraft and just ask him. You know, he's just a wealth of information. Him and Brett. Is it, which one bugs me? I think it's Brett. Bugs you? Yeah. He'd, he'd block you on Twitter. If I knew how to use Twitter. I mean, I have Twitter. And I'll get these updates where someone sent out a tweet. But when I click on my Twitter, it goes to something completely different. Your Twitter don't work either? No, I'm on Twitter pied. Your Twitter don't work? Your statisticals are not working? My statisticals are all <laughs> fucked up? Man, you're falling apart, dude. Dude, I mean, yesterday everything was falling apart. I, I went, we got one of those things where you scrape. It sits over the garbage disposal in the sink. And, you know, you can pick it up and you can scrape shit in there, turn it on, and it'll eat it all up. I just touched that fucker last night and it fell apart. How hard did you touch it? Then I had to reach into the garbage disposal to take the pieces out. I bet bet, um, bet that was a sight to see. That's probably how your statisticals got broke. You were touching them. Well, they stretched out when I was, you know, I had to <laughs> lean up and over. They saw more action pulling out that little whatever stopper with a scraper than they've seen in years. Oh, man, you ain't right. I hope your wife don't listen to this show. Actually, I hope <laughs> she does. We should have her on as our guest, our first guest. We should. <laughs> she talk about we how should. it's been so hard not to divorce your ass. <laughs> You know, we just had our, God, we're old as fuck, our 30th dating anniversary. Yeah. Y'all are old. 
Well, you're old. She's not. You can't call a woman old. Well, mentally, I'm a child. Mm-hmm. So. That's, that's why we get along. I mean, we have that. Oh, so one last thing. I know we're bouncing around here, but how did you like our hotel experience at Daytona? You know, it was at probably one of the... Dingleberry Oceanfront Inn. No, the Beachberry. Was it the Beachberry Inn? No, the Beach House Inn. Beach House, it. no fee. Remember, they couldn't afford fee. They took fee off the sign because it cost extra. <laughs> and the Dingleberries on the toilet seat were free. They didn't charge us for those. Well, the roaches were free. The toilet paper in the wall was free. The yellow stains on the sheets. What looked like it could have been dried up blood on the pillow. You know, all that came it with It could have been dried up other things, too, but... No, I don't even want to think about that. Anchor that might rate us. Uh, don't worry. We're already explicit. We were explicit before we started. I typed your name in, and it automatically went explicit content. <laughs> Did it? Wow, son of a they, bitch. They know you. Well, luckily, we stayed in there probably as long as most visitors stay in there. But ten minutes. I think they only rent it for 10 minutes, where we thought we were going to spend the weekend there. I never thought I'd be so happy to see a Best Western. <laughs> Boy, that isn't Best that Western. We, isn't that where we stayed at the second, the same night? Yeah, what was that time? called? The Tiki Ac- Barber? Acapulco best, Tiki? Best Western. We're hard. And to be honest, I mean, you know, even the restaurant there was pretty good. The Best Wecker, Western Aku Tiki Inn. Yeah, that's five stars. After going to the beach, oh, yeah. if you if you don't like the Western Akutiki Inn, go just I don't know two blocks down. Walk into the Beach Dingleberry Inn. Room one hundred six. Just ask so you can. <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to pay for it. Just ask to see it. Can I see a room before I rent it? Well, those they'll... doors didn't have locks, so you could just walk in, check it out. If you don't like, and it, it was sleep. weird, dude. How many fucking places have you stayed at where that door opens outside to the parking lot instead of into your room? Yeah, that was pretty awkward. Well, the air conditioner, if you would have touched it, it was going to fall out of the wall anyway. That thing been there since 1962. I know. I couldn't even find who made it. We're air conditioner guys. I was like, what the hell? I think Tiny Long stayed in that hotel when he used to race, race on the beach. It was probably nice then. Probably be my was, guess. Top it, notch. That's, that's back when it was the beach house in. Yeah. It hasn't been updated since they moved the race from the beach to the track. <laughs> and any listener, if they, they want to just go read the Google reviews if you want a good hour of entertainment. For some reason, there's it's there's some few people that come in and go, oh, they gave me a juice box. It's five out of five stars. But, but I don't think they... He got a Pop-Tart, too, remember? That that guy was on. Oh, yeah, a Pop-Tart. Which I reason. would only want to... I would eat it cold. I wouldn't trust their toaster if I had to toast it. If the lady in the gold gems glove handed it to me, there's no way I would eat it. She, she had me freaking stressing, dude. I mean... Stressing. She scared me. I thought, I thought she was going to kill us with her bare hands. I thought we were so smart when we brought our own bedding. <laughs> yeah, me but too. when I laid on that bed and looked over and saw the holes, the rust holes under that tub, I could, it's just I couldn't stay there. That was the homeless guy who was laying out back by our window looking under the bathtub into our room. Do we have show notes? We ought to post pictures of that wonderful place. Oh, I don't know. Of course, think- people... Ghost hunters yeah. might want to go stay there, and it might actually encourage them to go stay there, which we don't well, want to do. You know, they might think any publicity is good publicity, so I don't want to put their name. I've already said their name, so that's bad enough. So, God, that was da- an awful place. What about the Daytona 500? Do you think they booked that room out for it? Somebody will stay there. I mean, I'm I sure. would stay there. I'd sleep in my car in the parking lot before I would sleep in the room. 
Well, when I, I 2006, I went to the 500. I stayed at a friend's place. Uh, the 24 hour, I usually stay up at Orange something. Four exits up at a Red Roof Inn, which is after staying at the Dingleberry Inn, the Red Roof well, the, was awesome too. Well, next year if we go back, we can just stay at the Best Western over there. We know it's doable hey that best western had flat screen tvs they had actually made it to the 2010s yeah and we didn't have to use the bunny ears antenna they had That's on true. Top of it. <laughs> well we would have had to use one of our you know wire hangers to get a channel <laughs> at the do variant or whatever it was called i don't think the tv worked there I'm just going to go out on a limb. We didn't try. I didn't want to touch the on-off button, to be honest with you. Yeah, I didn't want to touch anything. So, so what do you think, man? Who's your prediction to win the Daytona 500? With these cars, and was it the camber I saw on the news they're going to make them fix so they don't go sideways down the road? Well, they weren't going to – so, from my understanding, they only pushed that back end out to try to keep the spoiler out of the air, and it would, I guess, creates more downforce, making the car faster on single-car runs. So, they were going to fix the car like that, run it last night for qualifying, and probably for the duels, and then they would go in and change it before the 500 because you weren't going to be able to draft with your back end – cockeyed out of skew like that so i think it was how much drafting do you think you'll see how much drafting do you think you'll see i think you'll see more sunday than tonight i think it'll be for do you think there'll be a big one yeah i do do you think i think i do i do it might not be as big as what we're used to but I'm scared with these cars that there's going to be certain teams or certain drivers who are going to be more cautious than usual and not ever race. They need so many teams are using this Daytona car and on the West Coast swing. So they have incentive not to tear the car up. Well, one thing I'm thinking, and you know, we don't make any money from NASCAR, so you'd be a little critical. But and it was, what, 20 years ago when the Car of Tomorrow came out? Didn't they, on the first year, only do it on a few races? I feel and like And then the was. next year, it was full-blown Car of Tomorrow? Well, I don't – I think we wouldn't have any issues right now if it wasn't for supply chain. The supply chain issue is, is the whole issue. I like this car. I think this is a great looking car. It looks like a race car. It sounds like a race car. It's probably oh, they look more badass, a, dude. I mean, it's they more do. of a race car than they've ever driven. There's nothing stock. It looks like a stock car, I guess, on the street, like a street car. But this is nothing like a stock car whatsoever. So I'm excited. I, I really am. I think if the supply chain issue was not was a non factor then we wouldn't even be having this conversation about not having enough parts because, you know, Hendrix and Gibbs, I know they said, went to Daytona with zero backups. They've got a backup car at the shop in Charlotte, but they have nothing. Didn't Daytona. Stuart Haas go with no backups? Or they got one car to share through their four teams? I, it's either or, one of the two. I did hear yesterday where Justin Marks over at Trackhouse Racing said he's not as concerned. He actually has a backup for each driver, which, in respect, you probably need one anyway. I mean, you got Ross Chastain, who don't know how not to hit people, and Daniel Suarez. They are probably going to wreck a car. And if they do, they've got backups. That's okay. But Justin Marks said that Chip Canassi – pre-ordered or bought parts in advance so now they've got an excess of parts in their warehouse don't forget you didn't mention my favorite wrecker 
Stenhouse. Uh, Recky Stenhouse? Or what did Cowboys yeah, he... call him? Re- Recky Stenhouse? That guy drives on an oval the way he does at Road America. <laughs> he's actually, I think he's a talented driver. He just, he has well, to, he put needs to be in compromising situations to have a shot to win. And because of that, he ends up wrecking usually. I mean, I, don't I got you think nothing. he would be better on a better funded team? I don't know. He was on a pretty good funding team before and didn't do anything. He so. won once, didn't he, or twice? I think he's won a super speedway, but, you know, so is Michael McDowell and Derek Cope, A.J. Foyt. I mean, not big NASCAR names there. I mean, A.J. Foyt's a phenomenal race car driver in his own, but not of course. necessarily a NASCAR driver. Well, you got Foyt and Mario and Dreddy are the only two non full time NASCAR drivers to win the five hundred. Yeah, I guess Michael McDowell is a full time driver. I sometimes forget that. Well, I'm gonna make a prediction for the race. Who's that? It's gonna be Tyler Reddick. I would be okay with that. Just because I know how to spell his last name. Yeah, Red Dick. <laughs> I mean, that's what I see every time I go to the rest of them. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say Kyle Larson. You think that's a risk call, though? I mean, I, I think, don't think it's a risk Larson. Call, but- it's either going to be Kyle Larson or Greg Biffle. It's going to be somebody with everything to lose or Greg Biffle with nothing to lose. I would like – I mean, I would like to see Grandpa Biffle win. I would too, especially knowing and, how hard it was for him to get this ride going and this whole deal put together at the last minute. And, you know, with the nickname as the Biff, I mean, that's just too good. That's I've seen as good Biffle as the win. Red Dick. I've seen Biffle win at Daytona. What if it he's, a, he's a good driver. Now, you know, I would much rather – he's driving a Ford, isn't he? Oh, I ain't got a clue. I didn't pay, I that, much. I didn't pay that much attention. He might be driving like a crossover. Might be half Ford, half Chevy, <laughs> part Toyota. Well, I think uh, what you might happen is there – I've read somewhere that if you're in an accident – you can buy a car from another team. So does that mean you'll have Ford stickers on a Chevy? <laughs> I don't or know. Chevy would, stickers on a Ford? If I was Rick Ware, I'd be kicking my driver out of the car going, Help, Cody, you're not going to be able to drive this Sunday. Yeah, but you know. Offered me more money. <laughs> Somebody's offering well, me more money to buy my car. But at the clash, the underfunded teams did pretty freaking good, man. It did, you know, at least for the class, seem to even them up. I hate to talk bad about somebody, but, well, I don't. But Rick Ware sucked for the last couple of years. It's just been god-awful in everybody's way. And our friends over on DBC like to point it out every week. We don't have Quinn Huff this year, or how, however you said his name. But we still got Cody Ware out there. And I hate being on Twitter because Cody Ware goes out and practice. And, you know, practice, that pays big dollars and a lot of points to win in practice. But Cody Ware goes out and does, like, finishes the fourth in practice or something like that. And everybody on Twitter, like, we told you these cars make everything even. And here you go, Rick Ware, they're going to be on top. Cody Ware goes out to qualify last night. Where does he qualify? Damn near dead last. So, nothing's changed. You're going to see the same drivers who were good last year and the year before are going to be good now. Well, maybe not the same drivers, but the same teams. Your top teams are going to be good now. I think old Cody drives because his daddy owns the team. Oh, I'm sure. Maybe we can get Cody Ware as a guest and he can set us straight. Or Rick. I'd take Or you can yell at us. Well, I'm okay with that too. We could just have Smithley come in and talk to us. 
I like Garrett Smithley. I think he's talented. I like LaJoy, too, but has he ever had a freaking car? Yeah, I don't know that this car the, – so here's what frustrates me about the next-gen car. Everybody keeps saying that it evens the playing field, but we still have A motors and B motors. So if it evens the playing field, you sh- everybody should have the same type of motor, but they don't because they can't afford it. So Corey LaJoy well, – The Benedetti – the Benedetti or Titi. What's his name? The Benedetti? The Benedetto. The Benedetto. Yeah. If it evens the field, he'll win, won't he? Oh, no. He's not even in the Cup Series anymore. I forgot. All right, let's go, Matt. He's over at... um. At Brandon's? Brandon Racing? No. No. Where'd he go? It's a truck ride, right? For like Yeah, he got there. a... I don't know. I thought he was driving that Ferrari at the 24 hours or that Lamborghini at the 24 hours. Oh, the white one with the American flag? It sounded broken down like someone that didn't know how to work on them. I think it was a Lambo with a four-cylinder Honda motor in it. Oh, yeah, with a a bad camshaft. Five-horsepower Briggs and Stratton. (laughs) He had a sealed unit. (laughs) You might do pretty well in go-kart racing, though. Well, since this is our first episode, I think we should tell everybody who our favorite driver is and who our least favorite driver is. So I, I'll go first. My favorite would be Chase Elliott. I know that's earth-shattering news, but I'm from Georgia. He's a Georgia boy. Let's go, dogs. I can't help myself. My least favorite, well, that goes without saying, Joey Logano. Yeah. I have the same picks. I'm a homer. And I buy auto parts at Napa. So, Chase, but you know, I love to watch Larson drive. Even when he was, I mean, the dude's awesome. But if you look at the hats I buy and the t-shirts I buy, they're either Dell Jr. or Hendrick Motorsports, so. I'm really good. I actually like all four Hendrick drivers, but if I had to pick one, it would. My heart's for a Georgia boy. I can't help it. Yeah, and I'm particular with General Motors. I like GM teams. I mean, it broke my heart when Stuart Haas jumped ship from Chevy and went to Ford. Yeah, that was kind of disappointing. And now I'm reading in the world of Twitter and all these bullshit places. He might go to Dodge. That would be disappointing as well. But I don't know. Maybe maybe with these cars leveling the playing field, it won't matter. As long as well, we don't ever see Dell Jr. in anything except a Chevy, my life will be complete. If he ever gets in something other than a Chevy – I'm going to have a problem with that. You know, I saw a Chevy pickup in town, and on the back, the sticker, it said Dale Earnhardt Jr. So where does he have a freaking dealership at? Well, maybe it was him. Ooh, maybe it was a red did. Chevy. Do you think he still has that? I'm sure. The Cavalier? <laughs> <laughs> it was a Silverado. Uh, no telling, man. I'm going to Google it. Let's see. Dell or a Tallahassee. Do you That's think? Close, but. It ain't too far. It's what, six hours from where we live? Yeah, who drives six hours to buy a car? <laughs> you wouldn't surprise me if you want to take a fun. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. Chevy and said, hey, look what I went to Tallahassee to get. Yeah, I guess you got a point there. <laughs> I mean, I would maybe I would just buy the little emblem that says Dale Earnhardt Jr. Chevrolet and stick it on. Well, the you bumper. can probably just put it on the bumper of my <laughs> put it on the bumper of my Ford truck. <laughs> well, I hate to say it, but I think Ford might have a superior truck. Yeah, I drive one, so I can't can't argue with you there. 
All right, it's time, for, it's time for reaction theater. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that copyrighted? We could call it Oh My Gosh Theater, right? Oh my gosh. Reactionary theaters. Throw an S on the end. It'll be all right. And if they can, this is, I just learned this. I heard someone else using it. it sounded smart. And I might be using it in the correct form. But wouldn't that be our own Maz? The I door no bumper clear? No idea what an Omaz is. I, I, I'm, I'm not I sure either. Isn't that like... Uh, uh, so, yeah. Sounds like something you wipe your butt with. I don't think so, man. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google Omaz. We spent half the podcast Googling words. Well... I'm not very good at words. Your word of the day app is really throwing you like, off. I just, I just put in Google Omaz differences. <laughs> it should be definition, right? <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I completely fucked that definition up. <laughs> Omaz is... Uh, Company for fundraising. Actually, I probably mispronounced it. Omaze. Yeah, um, I still don't have a clue what that word means there, friend. Well, let's wrap this show up. We'll do it again next week, right? That's the plan, once a week. Next week. We got to monetize this so we can retire. (laughs) Full-time travel to races. Hey, I'm good with that. I don't know how my wife and kids would feel about it, but we'll take them with us. Well, if we could just get a wealthy listener with a private jet. Yeah, so Brett Griffin, if you're listening, we would um, like to use your private jet. (laughs) I think Brett Griffin's the guy I don't like. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll use the private jet, and I'll just meet you wherever we go. Didn't he – wasn't he the – you can you can catch Bubba a ride with for you, Clint. Yeah, you can catch a ride with Bubba. I'll just ride with Brett. Wasn't Brett Griffin was Clint's spotter, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know why he annoys me. He always talks about how rich he is. Nah, you don't bother me. I, it's entertaining. I'll take it. I like entertainment. All right, sure. let's wrap. Let's wrap this up. We'll do it again All next right. week. Uh, next week, we're supposed to say like, if you like this show, leave us a review on Apple or Spotify, and it helps somehow. I don't know how. Nobody and knows subscribe. how. Oh yeah, and subscribe and check it out next week. Thanks, everybody. Adios.